So how were we able to come up with a COVID vaccine so fast? How was it that just literally weeks, uh, a number of weeks, but weeks after COVID really became a pandemic, especially in this country, in the US, how were we able to come up with a vaccine? You all are asking this question and you're asking a very good question, a very smart question, a very wise question. We all know, and we've been talking about this, I've talked about it on the news when I've done segments, that vaccines often and usually take years, if not decades, to be manufactured, produced, distributed, etc. So how then is it that we're able to make this vaccine so much more quickly? Um, there's about four or five reasons I wanna give you. Um, first of all, let's start with what we're in right now and what scientists have been trying to figure out. So think about it this way. First of all, we're literally in the middle of a pandemic. This is a worldwide phenomena, basically something that we have never seen in our lifetimes before. It is deadly, it is affecting millions of people literally throughout the globe. That alone, the urgency of the nature of what we're going through has been a big propeller in the fact that we've gotten a vaccine so quickly. Now, it's not to say that other conditions are not as important because they are. Cancer, finding a cure is important. Finding a cure for HIV or a vaccine for HIV is important. But what happened was with COVID-19, um, COVID-19 really rose to the forefront and really sort of rose to the top in terms of something we had to get on and jump on right away. So that's some of what we're seeing, but let's sort of get to a more granular level. What else? Why else? How have we gotten this vaccine so quickly? First thing is collaborations, okay? There, and I know you guys have heard about this on the news. There have been collaborations galore, and it is a wonderful thing. Part of this has to do with the fact that we're literally in the middle of a deadly, dangerous pandemic that is completely racking this world right now. And so what's happening? Companies, um, industry, nonprofit organizations, academic institutions, government, all of these entities and more are coming together to try to help. It is not just one academic institution that's trying to come up with a vaccine. It's not just small companies or a small company or even a large company. What you have here literally is the world's resources coming together to collaborate and work together. We're seeing companies on, uh, on different continents working together. And once again, academic institutions, we know our government, other governments, um, large companies, small companies, nonprofits, uh, other sort of um, consortiums and, and groups that are coming together. That collaboration, guys, by the way, is huge. Not only um, is it sort of leading into the next thing I'm going to talk about, but it also has to do with uh, resources and sort of the push behind getting this done. So that's that's one thing. Uh, and perhaps the second thing, right, because the first thing is really talking about how the nature of this pandemic, that enough is a push. Then we talk about collaboration. The third thing is funding. Okay, because we have this crazy pandemic that we're living in, that's literally threatening the lives of everyone in this planet to some degree. Okay. Um, we not only have collaboration, but we also have people, organizations, companies, nonprofits, governments that are putting money into this. It's one of the ways we've been able to move forward relatively quickly with this vaccine. You can't move forward if you don't have money. And in, and in years past with some other vaccine candidates and things like that, even other drugs, sometimes they stall or they get halted because of money constraints and money issues. So we have been hearing about big and top dollar when it comes to um, trying to make this vaccine work. That has made a difference and continues to make a difference. That funding is what is allowing um, us to basically have vaccine candidates ready to ship once the vaccine candidate is approved, assuming it will be. It's money. Okay. It's one of the, one of the main things, right? Okay. So, so again, we're answering this question. How we, have we been able to get a vaccine so quickly? How, how, how are we doing this so quickly? Well, again, pandemic, we talked about collaboration. We talked about funding. Next thing is something that um, sort of was related to those, those two things. I saw an interview on, um, an interview on Medscape, um, which I love looking at their, um, their videos and, and uh, interviews. This was an interview that was done by a woman named Dr. Michelle McMurray Heath. Um, she is the president of uh, Biotech Innovation Organization. And um, she was saying sort of as part of answering the question about how we've moved so quickly with um, COVID vaccines, one of the things she says is um, her organization has sort of tabulated that there are at least over 800 uh, research developments that are in progress right now for COVID. Over 800 entities that are involved in research and development. Guys, that's huge. And there certainly may be more than that. 
COVID has really sparked, um, sparked a spark um, in us. And it's not just one or two entities that are trying to help, it's a whole bunch. And all of that brain power, manpower does make a difference. Uh, the other thing that she mentioned was of those greater than 800 entities working on research and development, 191 of those um, are specifically focused on the vaccine. So that's pretty impressive and it's pretty wonderful. And thank goodness for this, right? Aren't we happy that we have all of these resources and organizations that are really trying to make this work because we need it? Absolutely. Now, let's go back a little bit more to the science because I know many of you still say, well, you know, okay, I hear you, Dr. Jen, but we don't have a vaccine for other viruses. We don't have a vaccine um, for, uh, you know, common cold. We don't have a vaccine for this and for that. Why, why still COVID? And you're right. We are moving quickly. I mentioned uh, at the beginning that it generally takes years to, if not decades. The quickest vaccine that we've ever developed thus far is the mumps vaccine that was done in four years. Okay, so that took a long time compared to what we are now. And that's the shortest of what we've had. Some, um, some science aspects of that that play a role is number one, the virus that we're dealing with. Okay, um, the virus that we're trying to, or the thing that we're trying to develop a vaccine against uh, in part will determine how easy or difficult it is to develop a vaccine, okay? And one of the things that happened with the COVID vaccine is in some ways we lucked out because it's a coronavirus. That's the, the virus that it is. And the way that this virus works in the body, et cetera, there actually had been prior research done on other coronaviruses, such as SARS and MERS. So number one, in terms of the science, not only are we lucky to be dealing with a coronavirus, which is something that we can manage, say, better than other viruses, right? Because every virus is not created equally. Every virus is not equally, um, uh, you know, we're not equally able or, or easily as able to develop a vaccine against. So we lucked out with that it's coronavirus. The second part of that is because it's coronavirus and many researchers have been working on SARS and MERS for a long, long time, and those are coronaviruses, we had a lot of the framework in place. There were a lot of basics that were in place. So when, when you say or when you wonder, well, how is it that all of a sudden we have a vaccine for this? Well, the truth of the matter is, it's actually not all of a sudden. The platform and some of the basis for these vaccines have actually been in the works for a long time with other, um, with other uh, coronavirus entities such as SARS and MERS and things like that. I think that's really, really, really important, okay? Because, you know, these are all the things that are really making a difference as to why we're able to have this vaccine much more quickly than any, I mean, really any other vaccine that we've ever had. I want to recap these because it's really, really important. And I understand if speed makes you uncomfortable. But first of all, I would say and I would argue uh, fiercely here that speed is something we should be grateful for. You know, we don't as a society, as a world, we don't have time for a COVID vaccine to come two or three years. Imagine that. I know you might be afraid of the COVID vaccine coming too soon, but imagine if the, the, the reverse were, were, were what we were living in. Imagine if we didn't estimate to have a vaccine for two or three years. How would you feel then? I can tell you I would feel horrible. I would feel absolutely devastated. It would be defeating. The thought of kind of continuing in the state that we are for potentially two or three more years or whatever the case is. I'm not saying that to say that you shouldn't be worried or that you shouldn't have concerns, but what I'm saying is, first of all, uh, speed here is a blessing. Number two, we have to remember that speed does not necessarily mean that we're cutting corners. The same rigor is supposed to be going along with this vaccine as we do with other vaccines. The thousands, tens and thousands of people are going to be studied, are being studied. Um, T's have to be crossed, I's have to be dotted. Scientists have continually reassured us that, that the vaccine is going to be studied as rigorously as it should be. And I've always said, and I say this again, that and I promise you this, I rarely make promises, but I promise you this, when the COVID vaccine comes out, when it has been FDA approved, it's been properly vetted, the science has been looked at, and by the way, we haven't seen all the data for all the candidates, and I admit to that, and we may learn things as things go on, um, and there are probably going to be some side effects, etc. I've done videos about that, but when the vaccine comes out and it's, it's, it's approved, I'm going to take it. I'm going to recommend it for my patients. I'm going to recommend it for my family. I already am talking about this with my family and, and my patients. Okay, so my point being is that I understand that the speed or the quickness may make you uncomfortable, but remember, think about the alternative. We are lucky to have a vaccine candidate, vaccine candidates that are coming up so quickly. Remember that speed doesn't necessarily mean faulty. 
Just because it's quick doesn't mean it's bad. That logic will get us in trouble. What we have to focus on is the data. What is the data showing us? If the data proves okay, as I mentioned, I will get the vaccine. So just to recap, some of the main things that are playing a role into why we've been able to get this COVID vaccine so quickly and more quickly than so many other things is number one, the gravity of the pandemic. When I say gravity, the, the graveness of this pandemic, how horrible this is for the world. That in and of itself is propelling us forward and propelling so many of us to go out there and say, we've got to figure out a solution, okay? Not only that, we've got collaboration. Because this is a huge pandemic, there's organizations, there's institutions, academic institutions, there's colleges, universities, there's governments, there's big industry, there's small industry, large companies, small companies, nonprofits, all coming together to try to make this work because we have to. So there's collaboration on a large scale. Also, with all of that comes funding. We're getting money. If you don't have money, you can't get nothing out, Okay. Those of you who are business owners or you, you, you run business, you know this. Money is central to so many things. So we're getting lots of funding, and that's another way that we're able to move this forward. Other things is that we've, uh, this is a coronavirus, and researchers have actually been doing research on coronavirus vaccines for years with SARS and MERS and other things. So you may think that this just started the research. It did not. We are continuing the process. This has been in the works. Thank goodness this virus we are fighting is a coronavirus in some ways that we've had some prior research on and have been able to apply that to this situation to some degree. Thank goodness for that. Also, as I mentioned, coronavirus is a type of virus that we've been able to sort of try to figure out a way to navigate, right? There are some viruses we don't have vaccines for, uh, HIV and others. Not every virus is created equally. So guys, I've said this before, do not let the speed and the pace at which we are developing this vaccine either turn you off or make you scared. What we need to focus on is what the data shows. And as I keep saying, I sound like a broken record. Should the data prove to be what it seems so far and should it prove to be safe and effective with minimal side effects, FDA approved, et cetera, et cetera, I will be taking the vaccine and I will recommend it for you um, and my patients and my family as well uh, for those who qualify. So guys, I hope this was helpful. I will see you guys soon. Make sure you check every single day, multiple times a day for videos. I got you covered, okay? Love you guys. Bye.